When it comes to sheep, not all are created equal. In fact, these sheep on Wairere Farm are poised to radically shake up the sheep farming industry. With a decrease in demand for wool products has come a decrease in profits. So, these Wadarapa farmers started looking for ways to reduce the rising costs of maintaining sheep. As genetic suppliers, one of our aims is to provide what people for the future, you know, in the future will need to re maintain their level of profitability. And one of, one of the ways in which we obviously thought, thought of that we can do that is by supplying sheep that reduce their, their costs of, of operation, with, in particular with regard to wool. And wool is, um, is a big part of the, um, I suppose, the cost structure around farming sheep. Much of the cost lies in the labour associated with shearing and dagging the sheep. The solution? Using selective breeding to target genetics that result in sheep that grow hair instead of wool. You have to draw the distinction here a little bit between sheep that shed their fleece and sheep that don't grow any wool at all. What we're aiming to produce are sheep that don't grow any wool from the outset. So there's not an issue around shedding and shearing half a sheep or still having to do or spend a lot of that money and looking after the sheep wool-wise and, um, and having sheep that, that you have no costs with at all. After plenty of market research, the idea came from Wairere UK's sales manager. Pierre thought that we could source some good genetics from, from the UK to bring back to New Zealand and offer them to New Zealand sheep farmers. That's, that's where the, the idea started. And, um, you know, we, he's, he's travelled all over the UK, in, uh, England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and sourced what we think are some of the sheep that will be best adapted to the New Zealand environment and the way in which we farm our sheep commercially, but at the same time grow no wool rather than some wool. Buckley estimates the New Zealand sheep population has been shrinking by around 4,000 every day for the past 35 years, largely due to the reallocation of resources and land use for blanket planting of pine forests. But some of that is also due to the industry's decreasing profits. If you go back to the late 80s, wool probably comprised up to you know, 50, 60% plus of a sheep farmer's income. Today, most sheep farmers would say, well, it's actually a negative. It's costing more to produce than, um, than, than what we're receiving for it in the market. So, so that trend has been going on for a long time and people have been looking for, searching for alternatives, which there hasn't been a lot of to date. The team believes the development of hair sheep will provide an alternative to current breeds and give the wool industry a helping hand. This is only just a, a small part of, of our total um, genetics supply, but it will provide an alternative to those people that feel that they've, they want to move away from, uh, from wool and the costs associated with farming it. Although the concept of a hairy sheep might sound strange, sheep were originally bred to shed their wool naturally. It was only through agricultural intervention they evolved to require mechanical shearing. In evolutionary terms, you know, sheep, all sheep, shed their wool because if they just kept growing it, it becomes a risk to them in terms of animal welfare, in terms of their health. You know, it just gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier and becomes infested with parasites and, and all those sort of things. So it's, it's actually a natural process for sheep to shed their wool. And if you look at, you know, around the world with sheep, there are breeds out there that don't grow any wool. They're naturally hair sheep. That's the way they've been for centuries. In fact, developing these sheep is probably the unnatural <laughs> side of it. You know, sheep naturally either didn't grow any wool um, or shed, shed their wool because that, that's a safer thing in evolutionary terms or in survival terms for them. So in some ways, we're just going back to the way sheep were probably evolved in the first instance. Emma Pettigrew has been with Wairere Farm for just under two years. Her PhD research in agricultural science means that she works directly in the collection and interpretation of genetic data. People have been importing sort of the shedding breeds for a while and working with the shedding breeds quite a bit, but it'll be the first proper sort of hair sheep on a big scale. Inseminating ewes is expected to be the easy part of Wairere's process. It's one of the, the bigger challenges um, was making, like just getting everything here and right and <laughs> there's a lot that can go wrong in terms of the, 
the semen collection, the, and especially the embryos and things like that, they're really delicate. And then even the compliance and everything to get them in the country, yeah, heaps of, heaps of paperwork in that direction. Thankfully I didn't have to deal with most of that. We've actually, we will have animals to work with rather than um, tiny little frozen <laughs> embryos and straws of semen and things like that. So actually having real sheep to work with is going to be good. But when it comes to genetic selection, nothing happens quickly. Implanting and inseminating this autumn, which we've, we've just completed, is sort of the first, pro, first stage of that process. Now we all wait with bated breath to see how many live lambs we, we're going to generate from this, this big plan. And there's 1,200 ewes that have been inseminated or had embryos transplanted into them. So it's a big investment on our part. The process now, those lambs will be born in the, in the coming spring. And, um, and from there, we hope to be able to offer to New Zealand farmers ram hoggets to, to use in, for next mating in a, in a year's time. So that will kick the ball, you know, start the ball rolling in terms of the commercial dissemination of these genes out into the um, New Zealand sheep flock. Although it's still early days, Buckley believes his flock of hair sheep will be a game changer for the entire industry. We have a great base. We've, we've started with you know, a good number and we've got all of the other resources in place within this business to, to develop these sheep into something that, that we believe will be of value to the, in the long term to the New Zealand sheep, sheep industry. And hey, it's, you've, you've got to be open to change. You've got to accept that 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 that's a part of all business and um, and we we pride ourselves on our ability to innovate and change and keep up with the market not only keep them keep up with the market but lead the market and, and look forward to the next 10 20 years and and try to predict what what people are going to require from their sheep in the future if, if our sheep are going to survive Ellie Franco, Local Focus.